Finding fires are a crucial asset for anyone curious in observing the world from afar. Whether you're a journalist, investigator or researcher, finding fires from space can be such an important part to starting off an investigation. They're really interesting for the fact that fires are important to monitor for natural reasons, for natural causes, but even more important to monitor when they're caused by people. In most cases, I find a lot of my work observing fires or heat signatures in and around conflicts where fire might be used as a weapon of war. While looking at satellite images of fires might seem okay, each of those data points represents what is likely a horrific story, impacting human life and involving potential human rights abuses. So let's get looking at how we can start to identify fires easily from space and verify information that we come across using simple data verification techniques. Hi everyone and welcome back to this series on how to do open source investigations from home. I'm Ben and this is part 14, so let's get started. We're going to start this tutorial off with a practical example from a case in Myanmar. We were told that this was potentially filmed in the north of Myanmar, maybe around the Mandalay region, and around mid-January, so around the 13th the 14th of January. But we have no real clue as to exactly where this occurred. We were told that there were some fires potentially lit by the Myanmar government or the Myanmar military. We can see a number of smoke plumes or smoke stacks rising up here, maybe here, a few more possibly in the background as well. And what we're looking at is a video recorded from the other side of the river. When we go through those simple verification techniques, we're looking to answer those questions of where and when something was filmed. And then perhaps start to answer the question of what was actually happening. So we could maybe go to Google Earth. We could have a look at the Mandalay region and start perhaps trying to geolocate this footage and see on what river it was filmed. But there's a lot of rivers in Myanmar, a lot of big ones as well. So this is probably going to be quite difficult to geolocate and take quite some time. But remember what we're looking at is quite large fires or potentially quite large fires or, or, or smoke plumes anyway. So where can we go if we want to see fires from out of space? Well, there's a really handy website from NASA and it's called FIRMS. FIRMS stands for the Fire Information Resource Management System. And what it does is it shows near real-time fire data from NASA satellite observation projects. And these are heat signatures picked up from the Earth's surface. What's really useful about this is that we can also go back in time on firms as well. There's a link in the description below to firms, but you can also just get there by typing in NASA firms and having a look at their world map. The link in the description below will take you through both the location of the video we've used in this case study, as well as the direct location of where that fire actually happened. So you can follow along step by step with this tutorial. So, Let's maybe have a look and see our rumored area was the Mandalay region of Myanmar and we were looking around June 14 and June 13. So I'm going to start with June 14. I've also selected June 13 down the bottom here. This is really useful this slider because you can select large windows of time, two weeks, one month, or you can select two days or even one day as well. Now you can already see that there's quite a few fires that have been active in some of these areas. That's not all, that's not to say that all of these fires are, are lit by people, are deliberately caused. Obviously this would pick up a lot of natural fires as well and forest fires. Uh, Myanmar has quite dense uh, green areas. So obviously that would be ripe for natural fires as well. But what we're looking for is around the Mandalay region. And remember, we were also looking along a river, right? And 
I think what we're probably also looking for is multiple fires, not just one, because you can see there's one here, there's a smokestack barely visible over here, so there might be a fire there as well burning at the same time. So we can scroll around and you can start to see some of these blocks. We've got single blocks over here, we've got ones over here, and we've also got a small collection over here. It's also next to a river as well, which is quite handy for us because if you remember our video, we were look overlooking a river where on the other side of the bank was the village or town that was allegedly on fire. What we can do is zoom in a little bit more and just to maybe correct and check false positives, let's have a look at perhaps two days before. Were there fires? Okay, no. Were there fires afterwards? On the 15th or 16th? No. Let's maybe go down to one day and go backwards. On the 14th? No, no fires. On the 13th? Hey, yes, we've got our fires. So this is really interesting. And what this does is it gives us a location as well. So now we can perhaps go through some of the tricks that we learnt in previous videos on geolocation, right? Matching up the clues that we see in this footage, like the landmarks, the river, the trees, perhaps some of the buildings, if we can make them out in a distance, like this little thing over here with the rooftop, the bank, the shrub on the bank, perhaps if there's curvature on the bank, this line of trees after an empty patch of sand, and things like that, and see if that might match up with that location. So we could have a look at this location. We can see that it's on one of the rivers here. We've also got the latitude and longitude up here as well. So what we, knew, what we know is that this is at latitude 22.36, longitude 96.06. So we could simply type that in. What this is doing is it's taking me to that latitude and longitude. And okay, we're now viewing the same place that we were viewing over here. But remember with Google Earth, we've got a lot more details and we can also zoom in quite closely. Sometimes Google Earth might have updated imagery, so we could zoom in just a little bit closer here. Um, click back on one of the dates and see that actually this was uh, taken in t on the 27th of February 2022, this satellite image. So that's quite useful because the satellite, uh, the, the verification that we've just done here has shown that this is in January 13, 2022. So we've already got a more recent satellite image that may even show some of the burnt buildings. But let's just quickly verify if that's the exact location. So in the video, if we remember, we're looking at this kind of green area and we've got a sand bank with a small green hedge, possible building, and a gap in the hedge. I go over here because I see this stand bank out, standing out quite large in this area. We're looking over the river. We seem to have a gap in a hedge, like what we have there, and we seem to have a building right there. So I think this might fit the location and perhaps our person was even filming from across that sandbank in this empty little gap over here. We could probably go through and match up some of the other features, but what I also want to look at is if there were any buildings that were actually look like they might have been destroyed. What we can do is just have a quick look on Google Earth and see if there's perhaps some buildings around here that aren't there anymore. Yeah. It looks like we've got some buildings that are missing that might have been cleared. So we've got a couple of buildings here. We've got maybe some buildings over here as well. So that's just a simple way that we can use firms to help us geolocating footage. So we can also do that the other way around. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, you saw on firms that there's a lot of different fires that appear to be happening in different areas. So what if we were to go to somewhere like Ukraine and let's perhaps have a look at a place called Mariupol. Mariupol has been one of the hardest hit areas and has been well documented. 
But there also appears to be a number of fires showing up on the NASA firm site. And we can see these burning throughout the countryside, with a lot happening in Mariupol's residential area. This is a view of March 22, 23 and 24 of the NASA firm's data that we can see. If I click on some of these options for more intricate heat signatures from VIIRS, we can see a lot more popping up. So how could we maybe verify to see what these fires look like? Where might exactly have they been coming from? Well, if we remember back to previous tutorials, we've got a lot of free satellite imagery available on our hands. It's not just all on Google Earth. We could have a look at Google Earth, but it might not have that regular coverage. So what we could do is use something like Sentinel Hub. I'll link to one of the tutorials I've done before on Sentinel Hub so you know how to use it. But basically we could go to the same view around the same date on Sentinel Hub. So here's an image that we have on March 24. We have a few other images available to us. March 19, March 29, March 14. I've chosen March 24 because it's in my window of time that we have showing these fires around Mariupol. I'm having a look in the western side because there seems to be quite a concentrated block of heat signatures coming out of the western area, just west of the Azov style factory. If we have a look at this area, it's quite dark on our screen, but we can actually see what appears to be some smoke clouds. I can click on my color infrared vegetation and we can see those a little bit more clearly. They appear to be coming from these residential apartment blocks. And that's just a quick way that we can verify some of these heat signatures to say with certainty using multiple sources that yes, there are fires coming from buildings in Mariupol and that we know when and where they're happening and specifically what's happening. Some of these buildings are on fires. Now we could cross reference these on Google Maps to find out what buildings these are, uh, what they're being used as, if there are still people there, we could have a look at footage on the ground to see that type of destruction. What we can also do, and I've covered this in one of the previous tutorials, is just identify exactly where those fires were coming from. Because you see in the natural color satellite image, we can't really see exactly where those fires are coming from. It's quite a dark image. If we open up our Sentinel Hub EO browser, but specifically what we can look for is wildfires. Wildfires is actually supposed to be used or normally used as a tool for uh, detecting forest fires or things like that. But what we can actually do is use it to detect some of that burning in Mariupol. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to look for a satellite image or the previous satellite image that we were looking for from Mariupol from March 24. So I brought that one up. The handy thing, and this is why I selected the wildfires function, is that we can click on this last tab, wildfires. And now you can see something a little bit more visible and a little bit more clear. So I'll get rid of those labels off there and now we can actually see what that looks like in comparison to what our previous one looked like. So we've got these red squares, which are showing the heat signatures, but this one actually allows us to see the areas of burning. Now this doesn't show the exact fires, but what it does is it picks out specific colors or specific data points out of the satellite imagery and just gives them a bit of a touch up and a bit of a highlight so we can see them a little bit more clearly. And you can see that quite a large portion of the city or, or quite, a, quite a number of spots in the city, there are small orange areas where there may be fires. And we can even see the smoke trails coming out of some of those as well. So we can, just for that day alone, verify exactly where all of those small fires were burning, which there seem to be a number concentrated around this area in central Mariupol some of them around here, but also some of them 
around the outskirts here of where there may be residential areas or homes uh, that are on fire. And we can zoom out and see those uh, quite a lot, a lot more broadly as well. For example, we can zoom out and discover fires up here. This appears to be a, a grass fire, may be of natural courses, may not be. Um, but as you can see, a very useful tool for detecting where there are fires from out of space. Um, and, and using those multiple tools together creatively allows us to draw out quite original information and answer those fundamental questions that we're always looking for of where, when, and what was happening. And then perhaps start to lead to using footage from the ground, who might be responsible. I hope you enjoyed this uh, short session on how to identify fires from space and, and how to use that to help you answer those questions of where, when and what. And I look forward to seeing you in future episodes.